Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis. Welcome back to Coffee Computers and More. And if you're old like me, there's a pretty good chance that you've got a bunch of these floating around your house and you just cannot seem to bring yourself to get rid of them. Uh, cassettes and compact discs. Now, while it's not very difficult to find devices to play your CDs on still, it's getting harder and harder for me to find a way to enjoy Jodeci's Diary of a Mad Band, more specifically the track Cry For You, every year that passes by. But Lucky for me, for Christmas this year, mom came through in the clutch and got me this sweet, sweet Philips Sound Machine 7000 series boombox for the holidays. So today on the channel, we're going to take this sucker out of the box, we're going to run through all the features, we're going to test it with an audio track that I actually own the rights to, and uh, we're going to see if this uh, Philips Sound Machine boombox is everything that the uh, box and advertising says that it is. All right, hang tight, here we go. All right, so real quick, what we're going to do is just take you through the uh, major features of this particular boombox. You can find this over on Amazon. Um, it is $149.99, and the price does fluctuate on it a little bit depending on the time of the year that you're looking at it. Seems like it seems to drop down the closer you that, that you get to the holidays. So we have a Philips portable CD player Bluetooth with cassette, all-in-one powerful stereo boombox for home with mega bass reflex speakers, radio, USB, MP3, aux input, and backlit LCD display. Now what I don't know is if we're able to record onto blank cassettes with the CDs that are playing off the machine. If there is a record button, I do actually have an unused blank cassette we could test it out on, and uh, we'll go ahead and get it out of the box. Now it does get four out of five stars on 1,467 reviews, and some of the complaints vary from dead on arrival to damaged on arrival to the audio is just not the awesome quality that I thought it was. And I gotta be honest with you guys, growing up in the 80s and 90s, in the era of Panasonic and, and Sony boomboxes and Magnavox boomboxes, some of those produce some absolutely fantastic sound given the media that you're playing from. So let's go ahead and open up the box and check out the boombox and see what it see what it's all about. Okay, so we're looking at 12 watts here, and it does come with a remote control. I think it runs off of six either C or D batteries. We'll take a look here. It does have the 30-day return policy with Amazon if there's a problem with it or if it's not functional out of the box. Uh, we'll check and see if Philips offers more of a warranty with it. Uh, it does come with an AC power cable, so you can plug it into the wall. And being that it is MP3 compatible, I believe it'll play MP3s off of a flash drive. If you happen to have your collection ripped to a flash drive, thumb drive, you can plug that into the USB slot and play from there. We do have an instruction manual that shows you all the basics of setup, but I've been through this stuff a million times before. Uh, it does have a digital tuner and a remote control. Oh, here we go, warranty information real quick. Let's just see what uh, they have to say here. All right, guys, so as I look through this, I honestly have no idea as this is in Russian. This is like contact information for repair centers, and I can't find anything in English about the warranty period. So we're not gonna worry about it. All I can tell you is if there's a problem with it, send it back to Amazon if you buy it from Amazon. Why don't we go and open up the remote first? I think it runs on one either AA or AAA battery. I don't believe the battery's included, so we will get the batteries in that once we get the uh, unit all set up here. There we go, hopefully you guys can see that. So it's nice, decent quality, good rubberized buttons. Okay, it looks decent, looks like it's gonna run on one, yep, just one AAA battery, okay? And that's not included, not a big deal. <clears throat> All right, now we also have the AC power cable. Sometimes these are kind of a proprietary connector, so don't toss this, don't lose it. Occasionally they have like a figure eight shape, and so they may not be compatible with the boombox that uh, that you already have. Let's take out the packing material here. Looks like this is the, uh, the front of the unit, so let's carefully go ahead and get it out of the box here. And I won't be playing anything off the radio. Um, I will maybe comment on the signal strength. I'll fire it up in the kitchen and see what it picks up for stations. You can put presets in it, which is really nice. So you can preset your radio stations. It'll search and you can quick save them. But because of the copyright rules and stuff, I'm limited to the one audio track that I have rights to um, that I'm gonna play for you guys. It's already burned up on a CD, so we can test out the CD player. So the cap was open on it, no big deal. It's probably why they wrapped this tissue around it. And let's go ahead and take that off. So we have play, rewind, I'm sorry, rewind, fast forward, um, stop, eject, and pause. So there is no way to record onto the cassette deck, but it looks like the cassette deck's gonna pop out of the front here. So let's go ahead and open that up, take a look at it. Ooh, it's got a nice soft eject system, which is nice. It doesn't just fling out at you, very nice. Got your USB plug right here. We've got, for the CD controls, we have volume control up and down. It's a knob that you can turn. It's got nice like little indents in it that you can feel. Okay, we also have mode programming. Uh, it does have, I believe, bass with it that you can turn up. Uh, tuning, let's see, album preset. I think it's gonna give you album information for MP3s. Fast forward, stop, etc. 
In the top here, we do have a headphone jack and audio in jack, so you can run your aux in if you want to, which we're gonna do from a CD player. Kind of defeats the purpose, but maybe you've got some other device that you wanna plug into it, like a phone or whatever, maybe even a record player, and you just wanna use this as a set of speakers, you can certainly do that. Okay, we have an antenna here that we can use to bring in the uh, AM, FM radio stations. Crack the back open here, and it looks like it's going to take uh, it said LR20, I don't know if these are going to be C's, or I'm assuming these are going to be C batteries, so it's going to take six C batteries, you have a nice cover on the back there, a little bit of ventilation here to let the heat out, and it looks like this was introduced in 2023, March of 2023, so it's only been out for about a year, so it's not a really old design, it is basically the Philips modern take on everything, it does have Bluetooth compatibility, and uh, 12 watts of, of average power output with the base reflex system. You've got the tweeters on the front there. And uh, why don't we just go ahead and fire it up and uh, see how it sounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the power on. We're just doing this bedside. Eventually this is gonna make its way into my living room. So it's asking for a disc right now. It's reading, there is no disc. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. And we will send the, put the disc in here that I burned up. So yeah, guys, there was a time that uh, we used to put our own music on these things called compact discs. I'm sure 20 years from now, this is probably going to be shown off in some history class somewhere on how the CD player worked. So here we go, let's check it out. Now this is just an acoustic track, so we don't really have any bass playing in the background, but it is a nice full spectrum kind of acoustic guitar, so you get the highs and lows. It does sound really good. I think this is dynamic bass boost, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so you have bass boost off. Okay, bass boost on level one. And bass boost on level two, which kind of enhances the bass even more. And I think that's a CD indicator right there. Okay, not bad. Sounds really good. Very, very nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna fill around with the radio. Um, unfortunately, I can't play the radio for you, but I'm gonna see what the signal strength is like. I'm gonna put the antenna up and uh, just kind of report back and let you know if it has trouble finding stations. Now, I live in a big city, kind of in this other part of town, and I can still pick up good radio stations in my car. Uh, so I'm gonna do that real quick, then we'll come back and check out the aux in and the Bluetooth features, and we'll go from there. Hang tight. Okay, so I'm gonna say this, yeah, the, the radio tuner works really, really well. Um, in the big city that I live in, I was picking up a station like every second that it was on auto-tune, and uh, it was having a little bit of trouble picking up a couple of the stations in Omaha. I'm actually in Lincoln, Nebraska right now. But otherwise, locally, yeah, it picks up great stations. A little correction I wanna make on this one if I happen to mention it wrong at the beginning of the video. It's an FM only tuner. You do not get the AM band on it, so if there's anything on the AM that you'd like to listen to, which some people still do, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to find it here. So what we have is a little Panasonic CD player from the year 2001. And you know, you might have other devices that have an aux out cable, who knows what. Well, we're going to plug this into the audio in and we press the source button, which will bounce between uh, CD, uh, USB port, uh, tuner, Bluetooth, and tape. And unfortunately, I don't have any cassettes to test the cassette quality with, aside from pulling a tape off here and then come off the air and then coming back and letting you know about it. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, the audio is, is great. It, you're not going to rock a party with this thing. It does get fairly loud, but I mean, it's great for a room. It's great for a living room, maybe a den, possibly out in the garage if you want something to jam out to. I'm pretty much going to grab it and just take it with me when I hit the road if I know I want to play some tunes somewhere and uh, pick up some C batteries for it. Also, I can't comment on the battery life just yet. So let's go ahead and play that track again that I told you about before, the one that we were listening to. It's called Living in a Flyover State by Spencer Morris. And uh, let's see how the audio sounds. So I've got the, turn the volume up on the, the CD player here real quick. So I'm turning up the volume here. Now this does have uh, bass on it also that's turned up. Why don't we go ahead and turn that off. Let's see if we can. Oh, EQ, okay. All right, so I've got the bass turned off. Let's go ahead and turn up the radio itself. And aside from being maybe just a hair quieter overall, the aux in quality is, is excellent. It, yeah, sounds just like it did when I was playing the CD. Also, you got the headphone port, so if it's something you want to use up at work, you know, you have that as an option, which is kind of nice too. 
All right, now let's go ahead and switch over and let's check the Bluetooth connection and see if that works. And from that, we'll go ahead and play a video from one of my YouTube channels and we'll see how the audio sounds there too. All right, hang tight. All right guys, so we are, I went ahead and turned my phone on, I turned Bluetooth on. It says uh, pairing right now. We're gonna see if it discovers it. Oh, there it is, uh, Philips AC797T. We go ahead and touch that on the, uh, the screen there. Okay, it is pairing, it is connected, all set to go. And that was actually the boom box giving you little tones that it was connected. Something I didn't point out earlier, and I probably should have done that, I, I do apologize. There's DSC, I believe it's dynamic sound control. That goes between powerful, clear, bright, and warm and balance. So I think what we'll do is just kind of bounce through those modes real quick with the CD before we go. So let's go ahead and play something off of my YouTube channel real quick here, and we'll go from there. All right, so we are running Bluetooth right now. I'm playing this from one of my other YouTube channels. This is a Nike, Nike Pegasus Trail 4 review is what I'm playing right now. I want to mention is this shoe has Flywire technology and let me grab a different shoe here and I'll show it to you. Maybe you can so see just there. regular voice audio is good. Again, we're going wirelessly right now. Let's go ahead and play the music again. I have that song that I was playing for you guys. I've used it in several videos. And so we will play that for you real quick again. There we go. All right, so this is running Bluetooth here. Wireless. Okay, so audio quality is pretty much um, on par with what I heard. Uh, going through auxiliary, you know, CD was the best overall. Again, haven't commented on the tape quality. I'm going to throw a couple cassettes in here and just let you know about that in a second. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to take you through the different sound modes here before we wrap it up. Um, unfortunately, this is kind of a fingerprint magnet, this dial here. It's kind of this uh, almost like a gunmetal kind of metallic coating on the volume knob, but it does feel like it's made out of metal, so it does feel uh, fairly solid. Overall construction is not bad. I mean, $150 is a little bit steep, so we'll talk about that in a little second here, and I've got a surprise to, to share with you. But anyway, let's go through the sound modes real quick. Get closer to the mic so you can hear me. This is powerful mode where we started off. Clear. Definitely pulls back on some of that, those lower strings, lower bass tones. Bright. Bryce seems to turn up the treble a little bit, kind of emphasizes the highs there. No distortion though, really good speakers, really good speakers. Warm. Warm seems to kind of pull back on the bass and the treble kind of gives you that mid-range punch, middle, that middle boost, it's very neutral. And balance. Uh, balance might be a combination of all of the above. It sounds very similar to powerful to be honest with you. All right, let me go ahead and check out the cassette player and then we will wrap this one up. All right, so I got through uh, side A of Diary of a Mad Band. I'm happy now I'm gonna bust out the rest of the cassettes and have a good old time. The cassette player does rewind pretty quickly. Uh, the tape audio is actually really good. I did kind of fiddle around with the audio a little bit. I was running powerful bass boost level one to play some R&B music and it sounded really, really good. Not a lot of you know fuzz or distortion in the background. Of course, that really does depend on the quality of the tape uh, that you're gonna be playing from it. And uh, let me go ahead and test out the remote control real quick here, because we haven't done that yet. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the uh, power button here and see what it does. Okay, it does turn it off. It does turn it back on. Um, you can go between USB, Bluetooth, CD, and tuner. Let's go to CD real quick and see if it switches over. Okay, it went to CD and then USB. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have on this one. Oh, we can change the display. Oh, nice. Okay, so we've got low, medium, and high. So if you don't want it glaring at you, very cool. I like that. Uh, we also have volume up and volume down. So it is a digital volume, which is kind of nice. You're not relying upon a, a little knob that could go bad over time, but if this would ever go bad, you could probably still use the buttons, which is good. Uh, you do have your controls. You can sleep, you can program it to play certain tracks. You can go between the dynamic sound control, which is really nice. All of them, you know, overall, I really don't have any complaints about it, um, except for the price, which we'll talk about in a moment here. Um, the one thing that would have been a nice addition would have been a uh, record button. It would have been cool to be able to record so you could record music off the radio or record music off a CD like we used to do back in the day with some of our 90s boom boxes. 
Okay guys, so what is my final take on it? And I'm not just saying this because it was a Christmas present. It really does have great audio. It offers a tremendous amount of flexibility. It will allow you to play your older media like cassettes and CDs. I like that, but it can also enjoy the Bluetooth audio, the line in, all that fun stuff and have a nice uh, digital FM radio tuner. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. I do recommend it. You know, I can't speak to the battery life of it because I don't know if I'm ever gonna run it from batteries unless I take it on the road. But uh, overall, it's a very impressive device. So. 150 bucks, do you want to go this route or do you want to buy yourself a really nice Bluetooth speaker because 150 would buy you a good Bluetooth speaker these days, which would probably offer some sort of aux in option or Bluetooth option too. Or you could take a chance and go over to eBay and buy something like this for $150 too, the 1986 JCPenney dual cassette boombox. Old school for the win, baby. Old school for the win. So this allows, you know, two cassette high speed dubbing. It does offer line in. You can record from your line in source on blank cassettes if you can still find them. And it has a sweet, sweet LED graphic equalizer. Now we'll be doing a separate video on this boombox later. I would advise you stay away from something like this though. If you're looking for a device that you wanna play all the time, just because you don't know if it's ever gonna break or stop working or if a knob's gonna break or if the buttons are gonna get wonky on it. And parts availability is basically not there unless you buy another device that you could take apart. You can't just get new parts for it or really easily get this repaired anywhere. So this would be what I would say would be the most extreme third option, although this is very, very old school cool. So anyway, this is Travis. Thanks for watching Coffee Computers and More and my take on the Philips uh, CD Sound Machine 7000 series. Uh, check it out, guys. I don't have any kind of affiliate links for you, but I will put a link in the description box for you to go check out if you're interested in it. But in the meantime, guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. Enjoy those old R&B cassettes from the 1990s. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.